harps come in many sizes. The type that classical musicians play is known as the orchestral or concert harp. It produces more tones than any other stringed instrument. The player plucks the harp with the thumb and first three fingers of each hand, while at the same time operating foot pedals. <laughs> The harp is one of the oldest string instruments, originating in the Middle East as early as 3000 BC. Harps began appearing in Europe in the 700s. They initially had a curved pillar. By about 1500, this evolved into a sturdier straight pillar that could support more tension. As music became more sophisticated, they added a second row of strings, as well as pitch-raising mechanisms, enabling the orchestral harp to produce more notes. This harp is a cross between a classical harp and a Celtic harp. There's the pillar in the front, the sound box in the back, and the neck running across the top. The sides of the sound box are called the ribs. They're made from 7 millimeter thick pieces of solid poplar. The instrument maker traces a rib-shaped template on the wood, then cuts out the shape using a bandsaw. He clamps them onto his work table, then with a plane, makes them symmetrical. Now he draws three lines across each rib to mark where he'll cut slots. You'll see what those slots are for later on. Next, he glues on a notched strip of wood called a lining to the curved side of the rib. The lining enlarges the glueable surface, making it easier to assemble this side to the back of the sound box. The notches enable the lining to bend to the curved shape. Now he glues on the lining that will connect the straight side of the rib to the front of the sound box. He shaves off some wood with a small plane, then rounds off a corner. He planes the back lining as well, removing a corner to flatten it. Trimming the linings reduces the final weight of the instrument. Now he cuts off the ends of the linings on both sides to be able to slide into place the adjoining parts, the bottom plate and the top plate. They're made of Russian plywood, which is a piece of plywood sandwiched between three millimeter thick sheets of birch wood. He glues the top plate into place then clamps it. He does the same with the bottom plate. He closes the back of the sound box with what's called the back plate. It's also cut from Russian plywood. He glues it onto the lining, applying pressure with tight rubber strapping. When the glue dries about an hour later and the strapping comes off, he marks the location of the sound holes, the holes from which sound exits the instrument. He constructs the top plate on the front of the sound box from solid spruce. He lays the pieces down from widest to narrowest, then glues on a reinforcement strip made of solid maple. The strings pass through this strip and another on the inside. They prevent the tension from rupturing the top plate. He attaches a solid poplar frame to strengthen where the top plate and ribs join. After sanding with fine sandpaper, he coats the sound box in varnish. Remember those slots in the ribs? They now hold bracings to prevent the ribs from bowing under the tension of the strings. Using a bandsaw now, the instrument maker cuts the neck from a two centimeter thick board of Russian plywood. He makes a slot for gluing the pillar, also made of Russian plywood. Once the varnish on the neck and pillar are dry, he hammers in pins for the strings. This type of harp has 34 strings. Brass bridge pins space them evenly apart. Steel zither pins adjust their tension for tuning. He uses a wooden guide to hammer the pins to a uniform depth. The three finished pieces fit together with dowels and slots. He secures the joints with glue and a long screw through the pillar. 
Strength is critical. This harp has to withstand 360 kilos of string tension. Reaching through the sound holes, he threads the strings through the reinforcement strips to the pins outside. These are nylon strings. Harps can also have steel strings. He winds them around the zither pins with a special key. The last step is to tune the harp with the help of an electronic tuner. Harps come in many sizes. The type that classical musicians play is known as the orchestral or concert harp. It produces more tones than any other stringed instrument. The player plucks the harp with the thumb and first three fingers of each hand, while at the same time operating foot pedals. The harp is one of the oldest string instruments, originating in the Middle East as early as 3,000.